Hello, Pizza Dough. How can I help you? Hi, can I place an order for delivery, please? Your address, please? Uh, 69 Naturals Way. Okay, what can I get for you? Uh, can I just get Ollie's cheat meal, please? So you want six extra large pizzas with chicken wing stuffed crust, quadruple cheese, quadruple meat, four bacon wrapped French toast calzones stuffed with regular calzones, those with 10 orders of bacon, 13 sides of cinnamon knots. <laughs> What is going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. So we all have that one food that we can't live without, at least I know I do, it rhymes with nut. And usually that food is very high in calories and hard to fit within our daily diets. But what if I told you, you could have it every single day, hmm? hmm? So in today's video, I'm gonna have a cheat day of your cheat day favorites, but what I'm gonna do is recreate them the healthy way just to show you guys, if you make some sneaky swaps in the kitchen, you can save a ton of calories. All right guys, so here is what is going down. So yesterday I asked you guys on my Instagram story, what is your go-to cheat meal that you can't live without? I got tons of great responses, but I also got some pretty weird ones. We got quite the sexually frustrated subscriber base, which is, on brand, I guess. But anyway, after filtering those ones out, I chose the four most popular answers and that is what we're going with. So I like to think that I am a seasoned cheat day. And what I know is that a cheat day does not have to be conventional. You can flip it upside down and do dessert before dinner or you can reverse it like a good cowgirl and do dinner for breakfast. And that is exactly what we're doing. So meal number one is gonna be pulled chicken tacos. And to be fair, pulled meat's part of my morning routine anyway. So everything is gonna be super simple to make and very quick and it will be all in the description for you guys. So let's get cooking. Okay, so the star of the show for these tacos is obviously our chicken breast that I seasoned up with salt, pepper, half of a lime, then with equal parts garlic powder, ground cumin, ground turmeric, ground cinnamon, and chili powder. Now we're gonna cook it. So what we're gonna do is sear it four minutes per side, and then after that, we are gonna pour in some chicken stock and let that simmer for 10 minutes, and then shred the meat, and that's it. Okay guys, so time to plate the tacos. So the tortillas that I'm using are just these corn tortillas. I just found the lowest calorie ones I could find in the grocery store. Generally, the corn ones are lower than the flour ones, and for two of these, it's only 100 calories. So over here, I have my pulled chicken, and the chicken stock really helps make the chicken breast tender because it's not dark meat. But what I like to do now is add a little bit of G. Hughes barbecue sauce. It just adds a whole lot of flavor. Not a whole lot. I don't even track it because it's like 10 calories worth. Just give it a little mix. And the chicken is done. So I'm gonna add around two ounces because this is six ounces of chicken. So two ounces per taco, very meat forward taco. So every taco needs to be filled with sauce. So I found a good way to make kind of like a guacamole sour cream hybrid. So in here we have some cilantro, garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of water, half a lime, half an avocado, and a quarter cup of Greek yogurt. And if you guys don't like Greek yogurt, you guys will soon realize it is your best friend. It's in a lot of recipes. So all you gotta do now is just blend it up and we are good to go. Just gonna go in with a little bit of red cabbage on top for some color. Gonna make these tacos extra filled for those of you guys who didn't get any in 2020. And then for some reason with tacos, I like to have a kind of like a pickled component. So I got some pickled turnip here, just a few slices on top. And then last but not least, our wonderful green goddess sauce. You guys smell this? It's just, look how vibrant green that is too. It's just a nice and generous portion. I like to fill tank on my tacos. And there we go guys, that is breakfast. Three beautiful tacos and let's go and enjoy it. Breakfast for dinner or dinner for breakfast? What would you guys choose? I think I'm leaning more towards breakfast for dinner, but let me know in the comments. So when I think of tacos, I think of, well, most people think of Taco Bell and Chipotle. So what I did is I opened up the Chipotle nutrition calculator. I'm gonna build three tacos that people would typically have on a cheat day and then compare it to what I just made. So we got three flour tortillas. We're gonna add in some chicken, a little bit of guac, some white rice, some black bean, fajita veggies, some salsa, sour cream, and of course, gotta go with some cheese. So you're looking at 1,175 calories, 56 grams of fat, which is like my day, 46 grams of protein, and 122 grams of carbs. You wanna know what's in this? Do ya? Drum roll, please. So you are looking at 455 calories, 58 grams of protein, so more protein in mine, 40 carbs, and seven grams of fat. Like, you cannot beat this, and I'm so excited to get into this. They taste amazing. I've been making these the past five days in a row. So let's do it. Now I've been taught 
that if you want to eat a taco properly, you got to use your suction muscles. You don't want any drippage. So here we go. I feel like I'm in Cancun on spring break right now. Wow. The freaking freshness of that sauce and that, that barbecue sauce kind of just saunters in at the end. Hint, hint of cinnamon. It just tastes so fresh and it's so healthy. You can't go wrong. And of course, you have the tortilla, you have the chicken, you have the sauce. Other than that, you can kind of like create a different one every single day. Different veggies, add some different cheeses. You can really make this what you want to make out of it. You know, you can have like tacos every day. A taco a day keeps the doctor away. I inhaled that. I can't even swallow it. <clears throat> oh. All right guys, well that was breakfast. Delicious, nutritious. I'm gonna go clean the kitchen and I'll show you guys some updates on the condo. So I have slowly been building upon my condo little by little, but now it is finally complete. So starting off with this beautiful picture of some pineapples, it is wonderful. It's a statement piece, you know? And then we move on into the bedroom where I added this beautiful skyline of the city of Toronto where I'm from. It just goes really well with like the, the curtains, the backboard, just my bed sheets. It's a really nice piece. And then the thing I'm really excited to show you guys, like the OnlyFans content is gonna be out of this world. In the powder room, I added a green screen with some lights. Got it on Amazon for only 220 bucks, guys. It's crazy how cheap this stuff is. And then of course, got a picture of Ollie. So that is the completed condo. Yeah, so I'm gonna go chill for a bit and then go and make the pre-workout meal. Okay, time for meal number two, which is gonna be the pre-workout meal, and that is gonna be pasta with Alfredo sauce, which I was very surprised to see, but I think I found a way to bring the calories of the sauce way down because when I think of Alfredo sauce, I think of high blood pressure and low self-esteem, but this one is pretty damn good. So what you're going to need is some chicken broth, some cashew milk, some cornstarch, Greek yogurt, again, Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and of course, any sort of pasta that you want. I'm using Kamut pasta. A lot of people have used chickpea pasta or any sort of pasta that brings the calories down from traditional pasta. So for 100 grams of this, it's only 358 calories, whereas 85 grams of like regular is like 310. So always just try to find ways to bring the calories down when you can. First thing is first, I'm the realist, but actually what we're doing is heating up the pan and then what we're gonna do is add in one cup of chicken broth with half a cup of cashew milk until it hits a simmer. All right, so as you can see, the chicken broth and the milk has hit a simmer. So now what we're gonna do is add the cornstarch. And the cornstarch is a thickening agent. And what it's gonna do is replace the cream and the butter that you typically add with Alfredo sauce. But before you add this in, very important tip, take some of this liquid and add it to the cornstarch. So I have two tablespoons of cornstarch here, by the way. And you wanna mix it before you start adding it or else it's gonna start to get clumpy. Okay, so it's all mixed together. So now we're gonna add it to our stock and milk and then let this simmer for around two minutes and then we add the cheese and our other spices. All right, so cornstarch has thickened up the sauce a lot. So now very important thing now, we're gonna take it off of the heat and now I have half a cup of Greek yogurt that I let sit out so it's at room temperature because if you go out with cold dairy, it's gonna split like my dad. So it has to be room temperature and we're gonna add it in little by little and whisk constantly. So just a little bit at a time in and just start mixing it. All right, so the yogurt is added. It's very nicely combined and oh, is she thick. So put it back onto the heat. And now we're gonna go in with half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I'm just gonna eyeball this. A little bit of garlic powder. Again, I'm just eyeballing. Just feel free to use however much you want. And then of course, a little bit of pepper. And then last but not least, always gonna go in with a little salt. And then now we're just gonna combine it. And then that is our Alfredo sauce. Like take a look at how thick that is. And it's very low calories. All right, so the pasta is cooked, the sauce is done. So Will, where's the protein, dude? Don't worry guys, I got it covered. So protein source of this meal is gonna be some shrimp. So I just put some salt, pepper, and garlic powder on it. And this does not need a lot of cooking time. So all I'm gonna do is just place it into the sauce and it's gonna cook by itself just like that. You don't need to do anything crazy. And the sauce is just gonna flavor it. And then once that is cooked, we're just gonna plate it up and then that's the pre-workout meal. Okay, so lunch is served. We have a beautiful dish here of pasta and Alfredo sauce topped off with some shrimp. I want you guys to take a guess right now in the comments, how many calories do you think the typical fettuccine Alfredo has? I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you comment. Good, okay, so there is 1,200 calories on average with 75 grams of fat, 
47 grams of that is saturated fat. That is obnoxious. And in this right here, we have 532 calories, 37 grams of protein, 78 grams of carbs, and eight grams of fat. We nearly shed off 70 grams of fat in the one dish. That is just ridiculous. Now, with Alfredo sauce, I like to top it off with some Frank's Red Hot. Put this shit on everything. I don't know about you guys, but I love it. All right, beautiful. Let's do it. And this dish is very creamy. Just because it's low calorie doesn't mean you have to like compromise like the creaminess. The uh, Greek yogurt, cornstarch, Parmesan cheese gets the job done. Oh, that sauce just hugs the noodles beautifully. Take a look at that. Cheers. This is what's up. Now I'll go with some noodles and some shrimp. You can have this every single day if you guys like fettuccine alfredo and you will hit your calories. Even on a cut, this is a perfect meal for you. So after this meal, we're gonna be heading to the gym. So since this video is all about your favorite foods, we're gonna go to the gym and do your favorite workout. So I asked you guys on my Instagram, what are your favorite supersets? Took a few of those and we're gonna complete full body workout in. I'm even gonna go and lick the plate. It's that good. See you at the gym. All right guys, so we're at the gym right now. See, the problem with cooking with turmeric is like it stains your fingers. It looks like I have finger bang Pikachu. But the first uh, superset we are doing is from D Simon 52 I'll put it on the screen right now. So it's squats, superset with box jumps. It's like a pyramid. So we're gonna go up in weight and then come all the way back down, 10 reps each. This seems pretty grueling. So we're gonna start off with this one. So let's do it. Okay, so that was one set down. Very tiring, so my biggest concern is once I get to 315, that I'm just gonna be jumping on this and just gonna face plant forward, but we'll see. comes up must go down although sometimes things for me just never go up but so we've done 135 225 275 and 315 and now we're going 275 225 135 still with the box jumps okay so we're moving on to the last set of the squats and it actually feels lighter than going back up i think because you're at 315 and it's heavy taking the weight off i think you're expecting the 315 and it just feels so light Don't underestimate box jumps, even though there's no weight, it's still tough. So now let's go on to superset number two. All right, moving on to superset number two. So this superset was by far the most popular one out of all of them, and that is from Michael Keller, 13 dips to failure, superset with pull-ups to failure. So we're gonna do three sets. I got a ton of reps the first set. I feel like after that, I just go downhill, step by step. I can see why you guys like this one. I have a crazy pump right now, last set. All right, 
guys, I am gas right now, but moving on to superset number three from Casey Bonk. So it's a shoulder superset. We're doing overhead press, 10 to 12 reps, superset with lateral raises, eight to 10. So probably gonna have to drop the weight quite a bit, especially supersetting with lateral raises. That's definitely gonna fatigue you in the sets. But uh, yeah, three sets of that. Superset, or what I'd like to call dessert, is an arm superset by 34 Jacob Miller. So it's incline dumbbell curl, 12 reps superset with barbell curls to failure. Four sets sounds painfully amazing. Jacob, 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 buddy, holy shit. It ain't happening. Solid workout, thank you for everyone who sent in their suggestions. So, those have quite the appetite, so let's go home and make some dinner. All right guys, we are back from the gym and I am sore as hell. My arms feel like they're about to fall off. That superset was ridiculous. But now it is time to make some dinner. We are making the most popular answer of the day and that is the burger. And when I think of burgers, I go right to McDonald's and I think of the Big Mac. And a lot of people say I'm a lot like a Big Mac. I taste pretty decent, not very satisfying. Usually need something else to get the job done. But we are changing that today and we're gonna make a healthy Big Mac. So starting off with the patty, I have four ounces of extra lean ground beef and four ounces of extra lean ground turkey. The obvious swap is going from the full fat beef to the extra lean ground beef, but I wanna bring the calories down even more. So I went 50-50, tag team our taste buds with double meat. Next up, we are gonna add one full egg. Perfecto. I'm gonna go in with one tablespoon of some G Hughes sugar-free ketchup. I swear this guy went to Hogwarts because this man is a wizard. The stuff just tastes unreal. So one tablespoon, which is 16 grams. That's a lot more than 16 grams. Let's take a little intermission there. All right, so next up we're going with 20 grams of part skim cheese or any sort of cheese that you want. This is gonna really help bind the patty together. There we go. And just for a little bit of freshness, we got some fresh parsley and some fresh onions. And then last but not least, because you gotta season your food, some garlic powder, and then just some pepper and some salt. And now you work the meat with your hands, guys. This is the one time you don't wanna overwork your meat, okay? If you overwork it, it tastes a little bit stiff. All right, so everything is combined. So now we're just gonna let it sit for a couple minutes and make them into patties and start searing them. All right, so we're gonna obviously make two patties here because this is a Big Mac. So what you're gonna do is once you make it into the patty, onto the pan around six minutes per side, it's very important you just let it sit. You just don't wanna be flipping it back and forth. Just let it take its time on each side. Okay, so the patties are just doing their thing. So time to make a Big Mac sauce that everyone can enjoy. That sounds a lot like Ronald McDonald's pickup line. So we have one tablespoon of Greek yogurt and one tablespoon of a low calorie mayonnaise. The yogurt is acting as volume for the mayonnaise. So again, Greek yogurt guys. So now what we're gonna do is tear our scale and we're gonna add one tablespoon of ketchup. I'm gonna be a little bit careful this time around. Now just a little hit, a little hit up some vinegar to counteract the sweetness. Good. We're gonna go in with one teaspoon of some relish. There we go. And then of course, guys, some salt. And that is our macro-friendly Big Mac sauce. Now I hate mayonnaise. I hate tartar sauces and stuff like that. That is good. Burgers are ready, but you can't forget the fake natty cheese. I'm gonna put that right on top. And now let's plate this monstrosity of a burger.
Take a look at that. Here is the finished product. This thing is heavy. It's like a freaking dumbbell. So the calories for the burger is 800 calories, 66 protein, 56 carbs, and 35 grams of fat. It is worth it to me. This is very, very filling. And I actually picked up on the way home from the gym a Big Mac. And look at the size of this thing compared to mine. Like, this is 560 calories, 24 grams of protein. So we over doubled the protein in this. And I can promise you, you do not need fries and junior chicken to go along with this. Like, take a look at this damn patty. Like, what the heck? It's like a disc, I just toss it. Like, it's like, it's like a damn mint. I could just pop it like a mint. So, no, yes, okay? So I'm gonna go and enjoy this thing. I feel like I'm gonna have to like open wide and yeah, nothing new, but. All right, obviously I have the Eric the Electric shirt on. I just feel like when I put it on, I just have more of an appetite. It's kind of weird how that works. So gonna, don't even know how to approach this thing. Gonna go Guy Fieri and go Cobra mode. All right. Oh man. That is juicy. Oh. I would take this any day over the Big Mac, although it's very hard to emulate those plastic buns unless you're Kim K, you know what I mean? But that Big Mac cross is where it's at. That was so good, the best meal of the day, and I'm super full. All right guys, time for meal number four, the last and final meal of the day, and the most popular answer for dessert was, so let's go to the bedroom. I'm just kidding guys, we're making brownies. So a lot of you guys said donuts, and you guys all know how that went, so we're not doing that today, and we are gonna be making some flourless brownies. Very, very simple to make, like you have no idea. These are the only ingredients that you need. Literally, that is it. You need some cocoa powder, PB2, pumpkin puree, and some stevia. So in here already, I have one cup of PB2 that I mixed with water. And then we're gonna add in two cups of pumpkin, quarter of a cup of stevia, and then half a cup of cocoa powder into the oven at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. And that's your brownies. So if you guys don't like pumpkin, feel free to use sweet potato or even banana. They both work great. I've tried all of them. But I just tend to like the pumpkin, a little bit lower in calories. So with this, we were actually gonna top it off with a chocolate peanut butter protein frosting. I'll show you guys how to make it once this goes in the oven. All right, the batter is in. It kind of looks like my toilet after the 20K. So again, going into the oven for 350 degrees, 20 to 25 minutes, and then dessert is served. So I've made a lot of vanilla frostings in my day, but this is not a person or a cookie, this is a brownie. So we're making a chocolate peanut butter frosting. So in here, again, two tablespoons of PB2. I love this stuff, I can snort this dust. So I have two tablespoons there. Gonna add in now one tablespoon of some stevia, good. And then the most important ingredient is a good tasting protein. So I have a chocolate peanut butter iso smooth by Blue Star. As always, 10 10, 10% 10 off, link will be in the description. So one nice scoop of that. And you can honestly just have this on its own and it's an amazing dessert as well. And then we just have the cashew milk here on the side and we're just gonna start mixing and adding cashew milk as we go until we get a nice thick consistency. And then that is the frosting. Perfect. 25 minutes later and our brownies are done smelling like the, the real thing right now. So if you guys are curious and wanna know the macros of the entire thing, with the frosting, it's 960 calories, which is still pretty good if you want to eat the whole entire thing, which I wouldn't recommend. But uh, so I'm gonna cut this up into 10 different slices, probably have two of them, so I'm gonna plate it up right now. All right, so let's give these 96 calorie brownies a shot. They look ooey and gooey and just so delicious, and they look very bad for you, which is what we're going for. So here we go. That is rich, boy. That is rich. Gonna superset in some coffee here. Every bite, wow. So everything that I've eaten today tastes full fat. I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. That Big Mac burger tasted like I was at Five Guys or something. Way better than a typical Big Mac. That sauce goes a long way. So if you try anything today, try that damn Big Mac sauce. Greek yogurt is just, it's your best friend. You just don't know it. 
All right, guys, well, I am gonna wrap up the video here. That was a cheat day of all of your favorites. That easily could have been over 5,000 calories if I did the real thing, but I just turned that into a successful day of dieting. So my total calories for the day came out to 1,979, which is a crazy deficit for me. I had 182 grams of protein, which is perfect, 192 grams of carbs, and 54 grams of fat. I had tacos, I had pasta with Alfredo sauce, I had a Big Mac, I had, I had a couple of brownies. Life is good, I am full. It just shows you guys getting creative in the kitchen is so powerful for your weight loss and fitness goals. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.